Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Humanity's Commonplace Arms Bazaars, written by Random3x. It had been several months since the war began, and Gorda was becoming increasingly concerned with its progress. What was meant to be a short battle over Croxus had become a bogged down and protracted conflict. The dimensional trenches had spread across multiple systems already, and were only going to continue growing in length and depth. It was these very trenches that had forced a stalemate. What was meant to be a display of their greatest weapons was now nothing more than a meat grinder. Hey, one of Gordo's fellow officers called out harshly. The man was relatively slim and almost wiry creature from a world named Hungast Nine. What is it, Vax? Gordo asked, gliding over using the grav nullifiers that enabled these larger framed species to move freely. Nah, I have received word from the High General. This was never good. The High General, as the man had touted himself, had been pushing for increasingly extreme measures to end this war. Uh, what did his uh, highness order? Gordo asked, letting the sarcastic use of the title ooze more than a dolph back during mating season. Chemical weapons had been approved. Vax's words made all the glibness strain from Gorda's face. <sighs> Truly? Yes. We are being sent to subsector S-3.1 to obtain the weapons required. But that world is a primitive planet with barely sapient animals. Vax nodded in understanding. The planet had long ago been used as an outpost to develop chemical weapons, but was long since abandoned. In the intervening years, a species had begun to develop. It was incredibly primitive. So we will be harvesting the remnants of the research on this world without the inhabitants knowing, I take it. Gordo had done a few teaser retrievals, teasing being when member states visited primitive worlds for one reason or another and left the resident species with only weird and unreliable stories. No, not this time. The probes can remain where they are, and we won't need to use the Glorfian disguises either, Gordo arched a brow at the statement. Glorfians were widely recognized as the most insufferable race in the galaxy, so it was common practice when teasing to use holographic projectors to make oneself look like the grey-skinned, large-eyed aliens. However, Gordo sometimes wondered if the reputation was simply due to everyone doing annoying stuff disguised as the grey aliens. Then uh, how are we to retrieve the chemical weapons? Max grinned at this question. We will disguise ourselves using the holographic field as member of the species and purchase them. P purchase? Yes. It seems the primitives don't know the danger of what they sell. I see. I pray that we do not get exposed to the weapons like while we do. It took no more than an hour's standing galactic time to arrive at the blue colored planet. They could see the relevant tourist spots for teasers already marked out. Rather a lot of farmlands marked, Vax commented. Yes, though there is one zero out of ten score for that desert region. Apparently, they crashed into a weather balloon over a small town. So, uh, where should we land? Vax asked. Near yeah, one of these arms bazaars. We were told to acquire these weapons from... Punching the requested data into the AI, the pair watched as it plotted a course towards the nearest weapons depot where they could buy the weapons they needed. Landing in a grey concrete covered area, the ship immediately engaged a cloaking system, making it imperceptible to the primitive natives. Donning their disguises, they readied all the required materials for the purchases, a container holding the local area's currency and false IDs should they be required. So, uh, this is where they store the most dangerous materials in the sector, Vax muttered with a nervous gulp. Now, Vax, remember the humans will see us as members of their own species, we will from now on be named Hugh Man, as is tradition amongst the species. Understood. Vax nodded as his disguise finished taking shape, leaving him looking like a skinny human with pale skin and glasses. Now my turn, Gordo muttered, activating his own device and altering his appearance to a gallery-efficient human with what Gordo considered an ironic chess piece. Star Wars, how amusing that the AI created such a piece of clothing. Stepping forward, they entered the building prepared for anything. Hi, welcome to Walmart, a human said at the moment they entered. Men are on the weapons, Max demanded. Oh, hunting supplies are on aisle seven, the human cheerily answered, pointing the way. Following the directions given, the pair were confused, 
They were just displays of primitive projectile weapons. None of the chemical weapons the AI told them were sold here. <laughs> Excuse me, Gordo called out to the human in the store's uniform. I'm looking for a... Uh, Gordo paused, looking for round furtively. Capsaicin. Capo, what? The human replied, confused. Gord... <laughs> I'm Hugh. He doesn't know what you mean, Max hastily intercepted. It is the thing that burns stuff. Fire? No, not that, Max answered, letting out an exasperated sigh. Hey, Mike, do you know what Capsaicin is? Calling for help from the passing human, the pair grunted in frustration, only for the new human named Mike to reply. Oh, that stuff's just like pepper. Uh, that's aisle two. Come on, guys, I'll show you the way. Feeling suddenly relieved, the pair followed the human Mike, only to feel their blood begin to run cold. Wow, colder than it already was. Before them was a shelf upon shelf of containers that their AI was saying was beyond weapons-grade chemical weapons. And, uh, this is all for sale, Vax asked, struggling to believe such weapons were free to access. Well, yeah, we are a store after all, fellas. Uh, oh, I see you're one of those extreme heat sorts, aren't you? Extreme heat? Gordo repeated, confused. Listen, fellas, we have the normal spices. If you want extreme stuff, you need to go to the people who grow them. Otherwise, you won't get feel the burn. We would not want to feel the burn anyways, Gordo protested. Don't be scaredy cats. The other week, my bro took a bite of a Carolina Reaper. A Carolina Reaper? Vax echoed. Yeah, a bunch of farmers went out of their way to make it as strong as possible. Like, you see this? The human Mike asked, holding up a small tube of powder. The one he ate was like 20,000 times hotter than the stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you say... Eight? Uh, did, did, did he die? Vax asked, shocked to hear a species had eaten the chemical weapon. However, his shock was tempered by the fact that it was a primitive, ignorant world. <laughs> well, he, he wished he would have died in that time, but uh, we all laughed about it afterwards. Nay, I explain! Gordo shouted at his watch, only for the data provided to make every cell in his body scream to leave the world as soon as possible. Thank you, human Mike. We will handle it from here on out. You, oh, what is the matter? Vax asked. We have to leave as soon as possible. Vax, look and want the AI uncovered. Following the suggestion, Vax looked at the data and felt fear overcome his entire soul. The world had indeed been a lab for natural chemical weapons. Weapons humans had taken to eating. Not only did they eat them, but they enjoyed them to such degree. They selectively bred the weapons to make them monumentally more toxic. This, this whole world is a biohazard, Gordo. I know. J just grab what we can and leave. The pair, with the delicate care of a man moving bottles of nitroglycerin, moved bottle after bottle of cooking spices into a cart before hastily leaving the shop after handing a briefcase over to the clerk at the checkout. Wait, sirs, you left your, uh, a ton of money? The clerk called out after them. Ignoring the calls for them to come back, the pair hastily rushed off to where their ship was parked, only to see three cars with smashed fronts where they had crashed into an unseen vehicle. I'm starting evacuation protocols now. Without another word, the pair climbed into the ship and flew away. Hey, Mike, uh, you were talking to those guys? The checkout clerk asked. Yeah, why? Uh, they bought like a hundred bucks worth of spices and paid with this, she explained, opening up a case showing what would be close to a million dollars. Well, uh, my best guess is they are really high. Now, uh, do we call the cops or do we split the cash? End of story. Story number two. This was on Neutral Anymore, written by Drifty241. When making contact with the humans, we found feared names in the echelons of their past. Once so revered, the unfurling of their standards on the horizon was enough or even the best of commanders to rethink their entire battle strategies. The Black Army of Hungary, the Galloglass, the Gunnis Crossbowmen, the Landsknecht, all of these groups were highly valued mercenary contingents, loyal to coin and country. Now, they were returning from history. With the outbreak of the Fourth Orion War, the desperate human governments ended their isolation from the rest of the arm, seeing an opportunity to project influence and make money they revoked Article 47 of the Geneva Conventions in a unanimous vote, repeating the ban on mercenaries and issuing licenses. They had spread across the Orion Arm like a malignant tumor. The humans utilized standing armies with professional volunteers, while everyone else operated on a system of levying men-at-arms. 
we stood no chance against the quality of their soldiers. I had been placed in command of a fortress world in Avric III, the Garrock Coalition. Our primary enemy had hired the Swiss Mountaineer Corps in the bidding war. They had deployed to the surf, scaled the Dubnik Mountains, which were thought to be impossible, and skied down its slopes, outflanking my defensive line. A strategic catastrophe of the highest order. General Ripton, the Swiss are setting up artillery five kilometers out, panted my junior officer, his face red. What should we do? I don't know. They'll destroy what little armor we have if I deploy it. I contemplated for a bit. The silence was deafening. Issue an order to the field officers to retreat into this fortress. We'll hold for a while here, at least. That's all I've got. Then came the glutteral booms from the horizon. The field of guns spewed shells at my fortress with deadly precision. I knew that the concrete walls wouldn't hold forever. The bombardment continued for another ten minutes. I noticed that some of the shells seemed to fall short in purpose. A creeping barrage. It was too late to respond now. The crack of the symphony of precision rifles erupted from nearby forest, targeting anyone with impunity. There was no possibility of fighting back. The levies panicked, abandoning the post. No one could even see the Swiss. It was only the flashes of their guns that gave any indication of their location. I knew what I had to do. The Srothian government had issued every unit with a white flag in the event that we had to surrender to the humans. I grabbed it, waving it around in the air like a lunatic. The whistling of bullets stopped instantly. A minute later, a thousand artillery pieces silenced. A voice called out from the forest, We accept your surrender. Walk out of the main gate unarmed and with your hands in the air. The cowardly levies couldn't get there fast enough, tripping over each other as they stumbled towards the gate. I walked up to one of the Swiss. Greetings. I am the commanding officer of this fortress. Are you giving quarter to these troops? I asked anxiously. Of course, responded the mercenary. His tag reading, Marty Boucher. I thought Switzerland was neutral, I stammered. Boucher sighed. For one half of our history, we sat in the mountains and turned our nation into an impenetrable fortress. For the other half, we skewered people for hire, whether they were Burgundian or fresh. The best mercenary pikemen in the world. And don't let the Scots and Germans tell you otherwise. We're just reviving an old tradition. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.